Hi everyone, Dr. Nathan Bryan here. There appears to be a new crave going on in the biohacking community in health and wellness. And that is this molecule called methylene blue. And I've get tons of emails and questions regarding methylene blue. And I've actually had discussions with uh, Dr. Scott Sher and others. You know, he used methylene blue with the appropriate uh, medical direction. But, you know, I, all those people say, have you read the methylene blue book? And I was like, no, I haven't. So I had someone send this to me and I was expecting, you know, perhaps an academician, a well-published author that was talking about the science around nitric oxide. And what I got was the ultimate guide to methylene blue by a Mark Sloan. And there's not much known about Mark Sloan. I think he seems to be a nice guy. He's Canadian. I think he lost his mother to cancer. He's looking for natural health solutions. So for that, I applaud him. But I don't see any pedigree, no credentials, no science research. I searched him on PubMed. There didn't seem to be any authorships on that. So it appears to be, according to Google, he's a journalist or a freelance writer. And so when I read this book, I was actually quite shocked that people are actually reading this book and probably, I think it's probably done pretty well. To me, it was akin to a word salad by an unscript um, Kamala Harris. I think what we can agree on in this book is that methylene blue inhibits nitric oxide production. I think that's indisputable. Everybody who is an advocate for methylene blue will agree. So the question I get in the emails, the texts, the phone calls, well, should I take methylene blue? And my resounding answer every single time is no. If you have malaria, if you have some type of infection, and you're under the direct supervision of a physician who in his best medical judgment thinks you could benefit from methylene blue treatment, then perhaps. But to use this prophylactically on a daily basis is not a good idea. And so the question you have to ask yourself, is inhibiting nitric oxide production a good idea? And I'll put my 25 years of basic science, hundreds of peer-reviewed papers published, 400 international lectures on nitric oxide and say that anything that inhibits nitric oxide production is going to accelerate aging and lead to a rapid onset of all, if not most, if not all, age-related chronic disease. Inhibiting nitric oxide production causes blood pressure to go up, causes erectile dysfunction, increases inflammation, decreases the mobilization of stem cells, inhibits mitochondrial function. Then there's this question, well, methylene blue inhibits INOS, the inducible isoform of nitric oxide synthase. And again, that's not a good idea. INOS deficient mice, if you knock out the, the INOS gene in mice, they're immunocompromised. They're more susceptible to bacterial infections, viral infections. So inhibiting INOS with any compound is never a good idea. It's like, it would be like suppressing fever if you have a bacterial infection. Fever is the natural body's response to fighting that infection. Induction of INOS is the body's natural response to dealing with virus, bacterial, pathogens, uh, all infections. So anything that inhibits INOS overexpression is not good. And then if you look at what are the impact of inhibiting nitric oxide production and signaling, well, again, you look at enos deficient mice in mice that are genetically bred to not make nitric oxide. They have high blood pressure. They have insulin resistance, diabetes. The laundry list goes on and on of the adverse health consequences of inhibiting nitric oxide production. So I, I always enjoy these discussions because there isn't one right answer. Are there doses of methylene blue, ultra low doses that may not inhibit nitric oxide production that have protective benefits? Perhaps. But the science isn't there. There's nothing in the published literature from a scientist, some actually someone who's actually done the research, gone through the rigor of peer review, published in a reputable journal that says methylene blue at low doses that doesn't inhibit nitric oxide production may afford some protective benefits. So until that data is out there, my, my answer and my response is the same. For me, my family, my kids, anybody that I know, I would not recommend they ever take methylene blue prophylactically as a biohacking strategy it should be avoided because the one thing we all agree on, methylene blue inhibits nitric oxide production. And I stand by the fact that anything that inhibits nitric oxide production cannot and will not be good for you. I open this up to a debate. If anybody wants to have a debate with me on this subject, methylene blue versus nitric oxide, we'll find a host. We'll do it on a podcast and we'll have a scientific uh, professional discussion. But the one thing I, I would warn anybody against, whether it's methylene blue or nitric oxide or any science, you know, before you start taking advice from someone who doesn't have a pedigree or credentials to talk about medicine or science and pharmacology or physiology. Trust the science, look at those who have done the science and follow that direction. I mean, I don't think anyone would look to a journalist if they needed heart surgery or were looking for recommendations to for, for medical treatment. That's just not something that we do. And so books written by journalists, non-scientific, non-academicians, non-doctors should be taken with caution. Journalism, a very important field. I don't want to diminish that. But I think 
some people get out of their lanes and it can do un- have undue consequences and really undo harm. So I encourage everybody, do your own research, understand the science. I'm not one to tell you what to do, what you should do. My only objective is to educate and inform so that you can make the informed decision based on what's best for you and your family based on real science. So I hope this has been helpful. And again, I'm sure I'll continue to get questions on methylene blue, but I'll continue to follow the science. But until then, nitric oxide is foundational. Anything that inhibits nitric oxide production and signaling should not be recommended. Thank you.